And that's just what an officer wears, a regular patrol officer. Never mind any kind of specialty entry guy for any kind of SWAT team, search warrant team, bomb technician team, canine officer. Never mind the extra, extra equipment they're carrying, plates in their vest, an extra long baton, a shield, a rifle, a battering ram to knock a door down. How about your environment? Are you inside? Are you outside? Is it raining? Is there snow? Are you on a hill? Is there grass? How many squad cars are around this where you're stopped? How many lights are going off? Is it nighttime? Can you see? Are you blinded? Does your flashlight work? Did you drop it? Do you have a place for it to go on your belt? Are your handcuffs positioned in the place where you need to get them with both hands? And if you're inside, are you in an environment where it's small? Or is it big open space like your martial arts studio that you do your demos in? Are you stepping on kids' toys? Is it a safe environment? Is there a dog? How many kids are there? How many adults are there? Do you have a legal right to be in that house? If you're back on the street with that car, does it have tinted windows? What if you order people out and they don't come out? How are you going to get in? Are you versed in civil liability? Does your martial arts school, does it have a program to have people go on the stand and testify to keep themselves out of federal court? To protect themselves from civil litigation? If you've never worn this uniform, if you've never done a day of patrol work in your life, you have no business teaching police defensive tactics. And I'm about to show you why. Welcome back, YouTube. YouTube, welcome back. All right, it's our first video of the year. Thanks for the time off, appreciate it. All right, we're gonna go into law enforcement defensive tactics this year, all right? We're gonna be doing it heavy handed because last time I checked, I'm a cop and I have a big problem with all these guys online who are teaching cops. Um, once again, these are my opinions. Uh, I don't expect anybody to agree with me. I'm not here to make points. I'm here to tell you the reality of control tactics or defensive tactics with law enforcement. With me, I got Paul Ingram. Uh, Paul, uh, RFA hey, Martial Arts. You got an explosive uh, YouTube channel. Kali Center. Kali Center. Check out Kali Center on YouTube. Go to it. Paul's got more fitness videos. Kali uh, videos are obviously fantastic. Uh, Matt's going to help me out, and Chris is going to help out today, too. Um, we're going to go over the idea of handcuffing today, all right, and the, the myths versus the realities of handcuffs versus the one percenter which could happen for you know, the, the general compliant people. And you're just gonna see a couple scenarios that are gonna be addressed to failure. They're gonna fail. It is what it is. Uh, it's just gonna happen that way. Um, and we're gonna go, I mean, Paul's specialty, obviously knives, swords, so he's gonna break out what everyone carries, which is a knife. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I see everybody carrying a fucking knife. Uh, a lot of people, yeah. Does. Yep. Um, this started when I saw some guy's video on YouTube talking about the armchair quarterbacking about what would happen with Eric Garner. Um, Number one, if you are non-law enforcement and you are critiquing the actions of another officer who ultimately led to the tragedy of someone's death, I, I think it would be behoove you to shut your mouth and take a back seat. You don't do this job. You have no idea what that officer is going to suffer with for the rest of his life and how he's going to replay it over in his head a million and one times. Um, Alex Embry is going to be coming in here next week, and Alex is actually going to put me in that chokehold, and we're going to see how many times I can say I can't breathe before I go to sleep. So if you think that there's a solution for that, uh, you know, you're, you're more than welcome to your opinion, but I'm telling you, you're dead wrong. Um, absolutely. The reason I'm wearing the uniform is I want you to see how lack of mobility we have when we're doing the job. So things to consider that you guys don't consider when you're teaching these law enforcement classes are your, your attire. How, many clo how much clothes are you wearing? How much arm span do you have? Can you move with mobility? Can you get up from a seated position down to a kneeling position? Back up. Are you restricted in your airflow? Are your handcuffs in a position where you can grab them with any hand where you need? All right, a lot of cops just carry one here and one here. Can you get with your left hand to both sides? I carry three pairs of cuffs. All right, I want to go over the compliant issue and how I lock up somebody for handcuffing. I want to go through exactly what I do on every traffic stop when I take somebody into custody, every domestic, anytime I put somebody in handcuffs, this is specifically what I do. I'm not worried about law enforcement tactics getting out there because bad guys, they practice a lot harder than we do. This is just for my uh, colleague martial arts out there, experts out there who think that they can teach cops. Sorry, you guys can't. 
um, start reviewing your law, your Fourth Amendment. Why can you seize somebody? Why are you putting them in handcuffs? Now, do you have a legal right to be there? And then lastly, does your program, does it come with a, uh, a, a litigation package to where if I go down to the Dirksen Federal Building in Illinois that I'm gonna be able to say, oh, so I took so-and-so's martial art class for law enforcement and that's why you shouldn't sue me civilly and I shouldn't go to jail. Something to think about, guys. All right, we'll be back in a second. All right, YouTube, so what we're looking at is the specific structure of how I handcuff, okay? This is, this is the tactic. The tactic and the technique are not going to save you in your, in your, your success, if you will. It's all going to be based on the level of compliance, your level of fitness, your level of willingness, how to finish the fight, and so many other variables. Who's got a camera? Who's filming you while you're taking somebody into custody and they decide to scream, stop killing me, stop hurting me? Uh, are, do you know why you're putting them in handcuffs? Do you know why you stopped them in the first place? There's a tons of reasons, but we're going on the idea of an extremely compliant subject. Just to let you know too, when we train, we train with an with empty firearm. There is no round in here whatsoever. This is just for placement and feel, okay? All this is. My, my shtick when I take somebody into custody, all right? Command presence is number one, it's period. And we're gonna pretend that Matt is completely compliant. Sir, I need you to turn around, put your hands behind your back for me. Certain factors I have, I keep somebody away from a wall. What I've learned, you put somebody with their hands on a wall, is when I go to make contact, he can spring off that wall into me. You give him the leverage to spring into you, okay? There's three things that we want when we, when we take control of somebody. You want compliance, control, or incapacitation. My first thing, obviously, I always go for is compliance, all right? Do me a favor, turn around, sir. Okay, put your hands up in the air. I want their hands away from their body. That's what I want, okay? I want to come to a position where I'm on their flank, on their back, they can't see me. Martial arts and law enforcement are two separate animals, action versus reaction. All right, it takes nothing if Matt's a bad guy and you know, we're, in, we're in a bar together and I'm in my plain clothes and I say, uh, you know, he, he calls my mother a whore. I have now a choice whether or not to engage with this person. I can go, okay, I'm done, I can walk away, go home. Law enforcement is the only animal where I say, turn around, put your hands behind your back, and you say no. No. I still have to go to him. And you're gonna see that done with Paul later, the consequences of those actions, both, you know, empty handed and with a knife. All right, so Matt's gonna turn around for me. The one thing, this is for law enforcement, what I want you guys to understand is whatever technique you choose, it's not about them, it's about you. It's very simple, it's your position. And this is the one thing that the guys who teach martial arts don't get from law enforcement. So if your hands are out, I want your hands out, please, sir. When you go up, you should have cuff ready in a position. Don't go up like this with your hands where you cuff like this because where's your intent and your focus? It's here, it's in the cuff and it's in this. He still has a free hand, he still has mobility. Your use of force that you're, that compendium, or, comp or use of force uh, compendium that you have, doesn't say you can transition from taser to firearm to uh, pepper spray. So why would I want to have my hands dedicated to something when if I need to go to my pepper spray, I may need to go to that first, okay? That use of force is meant to be flexed to however you need it. All I want you to see is what I do. I need to let him know that I'm here, I'm disrupting this. But I want you to separate your feet for me. Wider. Good, wider. Okay. It doesn't matter if this guy's just getting patted down for the back of my, my squad car or if I'm taking him into custody. I want a hand. I want this hand. I take the same side hand and I take their core. I want their balance. What I don't, I'm not leaned out here. I'm not leaned up here. I'm in my balance. I lock that skeletal structure up. This is what I want. I want his arm, shoulder torqued up, and I want this right here. This is what I do. You'll see that no matter where I am, head, I want to control him. Once I control his body, put in pain, then I go to my handcuffing technique, which is why I have handcuffs here, cuffs behind, does it make a difference? This is the base. You lock up that skeletal structure, I take his hand like a motorcycle, and I torque it, and you, where do you feel the pain at? This. And if he decides to move, there's gonna be a problem, but I have to be on top of him. Because if he decides to resist, I can't fight him from here, I can't fight him from here, I can't fight him from here. I have to be completely controlled. I have to be willing to disengage to go to the body. So just for the sake of, of initiating the handcuffing, my stick is turn around, put your hands on your sides. Okay, bring your left arm behind your back, please. Good, watch, spread your feet wider, wider. I know I have to go hands on, 
Doesn't matter, every time you run the risk, you make contact, he has an option to wind up reacting. So I'm here, I want to lock up that skeletal structure, that's me, okay? That's it, that's compliance. Once you have him in the handcuffs, you're good, you search him, all right? That's just how I do that, all right? All right, and like I said before too, are you in a confined space or are you in a big area like your martial arts studio to where you can wind up manipulating somebody? The technique that made me just completely cringe was the gentleman had said that he can take somebody down regardless of their size with two fingers. And the, the, the fingers were up on the shoulder and here. And there's a lot of structural areas that you can manipulate. You want to manipulate that spine. It's really hard for him to do this. The problem is, is the level of compliance. Hey, as a martial arts instructor, what you are doing is more damage to law enforcement than you seem to understand. Because Joe Civilian now finds your YouTube, finds you on Facebook, sees you as a martial arts expert, and you say, yes, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I can take down the biggest man with only two fingers. And they believe your bullshit. So now they think, well, why can't all cops do this? Because it's a fallacy. It does not happen. And if you don't believe me, strap on a uniform and go do it and have all the litigation going through your head about what you're able to do when you write your report afterwards and whether or not you did it legally. It's a problem you guys in La La Land are just living and it's gotta stop. What I want you to see is, I want you to see me trying to get behind Chris in a, in a, in a confined area and he's just not gonna let me. All right, that's just the, all the instructions he's got. All right, there's a lot of times cops are one-on-one -on -one and it may take two or three minutes to get for a backup, a backup to get there. 30 seconds is a long time. But you got a bigger guy like this, and I say, sir, do you care to put your hands behind your back? No. I need to put your hands behind your back, sir. Not gonna happen. put your hands behind your back. No. Put your hands behind your back. What do you do as a cop? Now, I know I'm a strong guy. I know that I have structure. I know I have all this stuff. Am I allowed to hit somebody in my use of force continuum? Do you think I can go to my baton or my pepper spray? Let's see how, long, how fast it takes. I'll try to get my baton out, okay? Let's see how fast I can get to my baton by the time Chris winds up using a level of force that escalates to where I have to get him. So we'll do the baton first. Put your hands behind your back, sir. No. Need you to put your hands behind your back. Not happening. Sir, put your hands behind your back. No. Well, there's a problem. Let's see how fast I can go for my handcuffs. And let's see the position of my hands when somebody doesn't want to comply. Put your hands behind your back, Chris. No. Turn around. No. I'm not going to tell you again. No. Matasia, Chris. No. Matasia. No, you're not. Okay, so Matasia. No, you're not. Well, let's see, people. Where is my hands? The one thing you guys don't get is that I have to go to one of my tools, right? So when I go hands out with Chris and Chris decides he wants to put hands on me, where are his hands? On my core, disturbing me. My hands are coming up on my weapons. Can I get my weapon systems out in a fast amount of time to be able to use on him in a one-on-one -on -one circumstance? Doesn't go the way you think it goes, guys, and he's a student of mine. Imagine somebody who actually really is hell-bent on not going to jail, all right? That's not compliance. All right, so by the grace of God, you did get behind this guy, right? He let you. You had a bad day, and all of a sudden you went, hey, I'm going to come behind you, I'm going to get to your flank because I'm taking you into custody, right? He, 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 is, he just had a fight with his girlfriend. She's fucking another guy. He is all amped up seven ways from Sunday, and he does not want to be bothered by anybody. You came to his house. You entered in his house because someone called 911. Can you justify being in there? What if he says, no, nobody called 911 here, doesn't want to let you in? Do you have the legal right to be in there? These are all questions I don't know if you guys understand. So now you've barred your way into his house, whether or not you violated his Fourth Amendment, I don't know. He's all pissed off because he's got a barking dog, screaming kids, and a cheating girlfriend, but you're going to get behind him, right? Just like Mr. Garner, who sat there and said, it ends today. Because we all know what his frame of mind was, right? He was a gentle giant. Right? I'm going to get behind Chris, who's a gentle giant. He let me get back here. It's great. With my two fingers here and here, I'm going to take Chris down to the ground. Let's see how this goes. You are allowed to react when I when I wind up uh, making contact. All right. Let's so, see how this goes. Because you know, don't forget, I also have a very strong wrestling background, so I know how to take people down. I know it's coming before it's coming. How am I going to stop a guy who wants to get pissed off and fucking put me in the wall, get the damage in the wall? All right, let's try that again. All right, Chris, let me fair put your hands behind your back. No. This time, actually, comply put your hands behind your back. Let's see how it goes like that. So he's at a disadvantage. Let's see how Chris acts. 
Can I sit there and go to my tools in time? Or am I trying to keep a guy off me? It's really easy, isn't it, guys? With your law enforcement defensive tactics. All right, now we got the one percenter. You're driving down the road, somebody matches the description of a crime that happened, so legally you have the reason to do a Terry stop. You saw a gentleman with a long ponytail, black, uh, black sweatshirt, hood sweatshirt, jeans. It matches the description of somebody who just committed some vehicle burglaries. I have the legal right to stop him, okay? That's, that's, so we're taking that compliance factor out. Okay, I did my investigation. I determined that this is the gentleman who I have to place in the custody. Again, he's the one percenter. I don't know him. You could do a one up, once up and down. Visually, do I have anything, you know, from Paul that's going to give me any indication that, you know, he's armed? I don't know. In, in my opinion, everybody's armed. Everybody is armed all the time. So what happens when my instructions fail? Okay, you have your hands in your pockets. You can start in there because that's what people are going to do. Sir, do me here. Put your hands in your pockets. He doesn't want to acknowledge me. He doesn't want to say anything. He's already at a mindset where there's going to be a problem. I should be at a mindset of something's really going to go fucking wrong here. So what do I do personally? Send me another unit. That's what I do. And hopefully two or three cars are going to arrive. And I don't care. We'll stand there like this at a, at a staring contest. He's going to go. Hey, you know, I'm, going to do my, <clears throat> I'm going to do my fucking best to make sure that he doesn't get pissed off, right? Because there's a level of civility you still have to handle. All right? It is just, hey, you know what? Do me a favor. I understand you may have had a bad day, but we're going to talk about this. I don't know what the hell happened with you. You better start having your conversation skills a little bit better and hope that he isn't in a place where he's, he's going to wind up attacking you. But let's look at what happens since you taught this in a very large martial arts area. Let's look what happens when the subject has an option of fight or flight. Okay? So I did get behind Paul, right? So Paul allowed me to get to his flank. All right? So again, too, Paul can react. Let's, let's go, and I'll, and I'll say this too. Let's look at the flight first, all right? And your first option is just to run, all right? So I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to try, try and take Paul into custody. Let's see what happens with this one. Well, my two-finger takedown really worked. It kind of worked really well, didn't it? So somebody flew, right? Now, you get that one percenter. One percenter, and again, too, do you know what crime he committed? Can you chase him? Legally, in, in the state of Illinois, let's look at it this way, if somebody runs from you, are you allowed to chase them? You should study your uh, constitution and your law a little bit. So I want you to see how fast that 21-foot rule starts from zero feet to however fast he chooses to go to, current, to coming back. All right, so you get to get the bird's eye view as best we can here. So again, I got Paul. Let's uh, face that way so there's a bigger, uh, bigger thing there. I told you all these are set up to failure because the one thing you don't realize as martial artists is once contact is made, he fucking knows exactly who you are. All bets are off. You are so focused on your technique, he's thinking of everything he could do to either fight or flight. And he's probably gonna win if you don't know what you're doing. So, let's look at what happens here when I go and I go to try to take Paul into custody with those two fingers. Let's see how fast, now remember, I have, let's, you know what, can you grab me the red one for, for training safety sake? I got my, let's gonna see how fast I can get my firearm out. Now what we're taking in consideration is, I know Paul has committed a felony. I have knowledge that he is armed. I have knowledge that he is a, a he fights with the police. You're not, you're not coming into consideration that you know this guy from Adam, you don't know what current crime he committed. You're trying to play in your head again. Do I even have the legal right to stop him, okay? So we're making this really easy for you. I also have my, my uh, weapon retention system defeated, and I'm gonna leave this really loose here, all right? I already know how this is gonna fucking play out. And I have to wonder, in today's society, with everybody who's out to sue cops and get them fired, would you necessarily go to your gun? But the only option in this when somebody's bringing lethal force to you is you use lethal force in return. So I'm ready to go. Let's see my reaction on this, all right? Okay, so you distance, sir, face that wall, please. Better have had my funeral arrangements pretty much made up. Let's try that again, please. All right, do me a favor. I don't want you to move, do you understand? Do you understand the commands I gave you? Yes. You move, it's gonna be a bad day for you, do you understand? Okay. Hey, I have to speak to the level of what you understand. If you fucking move, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a problem. You get it? Yep. All right, don't move. <laughs> I can go whenever I want, right? Because I'm the Pretty much. Guy. Pretty much. See, the issue is, is we play by rules, they don't. And that's the one thing you guys don't understand. 
All right, let's look at one more scenario. I just got called to a domestic disturbance to where Paul doesn't want to leave his girlfriend's house. All right, she called, they got an argument, she used the police. He's already amped up because he's trying to have a discussion with her over her infidelity, cheating, and he just wants to talk. Now I'm coming in because a lot of cops come in with that attitude, which that's our issue to address. You better learn as an officer how to empathize with the people that you're dealing with. We are their servants. Remember that, they do pay our check. I don't care if it's that 5% you know, uh, POS, they still do pay you. You better learn how to sit there and talk to them as gentlemen and ladies, okay? Until they give you a reason not to. So I come to Paul and I talk to him and I say, you know what, uh, she's, she's bitching and complaining because he's gotta go. I'm not gonna arrest him. I don't have to arrest him because he didn't do anything. He put hands on him, this and that. But I'm in his apartment and she stays there. So it's their apartment, I'm gonna kick him out. All right, let's look at action versus reaction again. I walk in there, hey Paul, I know you had a rough day today, man. You yeah, just I gotta did. go, okay? You gotta go. No, no I, I really just, I need to sit for a minute. Look, Dad, I understand that. Look, you, let's, we can go, you sit in the back of my car, I'll give you a ride anywhere you no, need. No, I need to sit right, this is my apartment. I get it, but you know what? I got called 911 here. I don't here. care. Oh boy, we have a problem. Let's take a different tone, ready? Let's see what happens when you have that knowledge that Paul's a fighter and whatnot, all right? Oh, what are you gonna do? You see that laying on the ground too. All right, let's just, that's it, that's in play. No, we'll leave that in play. Put it right there. No, I'm not gonna have that. All right, I walk in. Hey, do me a favor, do what? not move for that. Don't move for that, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, for look, what? I understand that you're pissed, right? Legally, is it a higher level of force if you have your firearm drawn and he's just got a knife sitting there? Do you martial artists know whether or not this is you know, considered a higher level of force. What if Paul, he doesn't even know it's there, it's a butter knife, or he just had lunch I'll or something. I'll a sandwich. And I have my firearm out. Do you not think that he's gonna be in a different frame of mindset to maybe file a complaint that could go somewhere too? These are all things you guys gotta think of. All right, so let's, see, let's leave this out of the way. So a normal, in my opinion, officer would keep distance, he'd have his firearm out. Do me a favor, Paul, don't go for the knife at all, okay? I just don't want you to go for the knife. I know you have a bad day. Listen to me, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. <laughs> Yeah, you guys think this shit is easy. <laughs> you think this is great. Because action is always quicker than reaction. And I can guarantee you, you're gonna backpedal any of these things. So let's say we know, we agree that on one of my commands, you're gonna get up and charge me, right? So I mean, that's, that's gonna be the scenario. Let's see how fast I can get to my firearm and I'll go bang, bang, see how many rounds I can get off. And I'm gonna save distance, right? I walk in here. Paul, I gotta take you out, okay? I got it, you know, I know you have a thing. I think I would have gotten one round off and he's off to my flank. And I backpedal. He's got his hand on my firearm. I got a round off, which in Chicago, mm -hmm. in the middle of winter, do you think that my round is gonna penetrate anywhere on him? It may, it may do some damage. Yeah. You think you might, have, might have grazed that, but I mean, if you're pissed move. off, that's not necessarily right. gonna stop you down here. No, we're talking about the knife fighters too, right? Can you show where you see target ears on me? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, your hips are open, which I don't really care about, but your armpits are open, which is what I want. Your neck is open, obviously your face, your wrists, your knees, your groins. Oh, but my vest can stop that. No, your vest won't. Your vest won't stop that. No way. Nope, not gonna happen. If you guys live in La La Land. We should get one and test it. I got an actual thing. If you guys live in La La Land and you've just seen a couple different scenarios, the difference between compliance and not, you have to understand what your audience is too. Do you have the brand new rookie cop on who doesn't have that spidey sense that goes off just yet? Do you have the 20 year veteran on who's got about 50 extra pounds that he just refuses to lose because he's close to retirement and he doesn't want to listen to any bullshit that you're bringing in about fancy this and that? Martial arts is divide, designed for combat. We have rules that we're supposed to follow. Okay, we have, we have you know, use of force scale, continuums, things that I have to be able to articulate why, if Paul's just minding his own business and he's got a butter knife next to him, officer, why'd you pull your gun out? Can you articulate because you were in fear for your safety? Why? He was having a bad day. He was the one who was in tears because his girlfriend cheated on him. Hey, there's a ton of scenarios that you guys have never thought of. And you haven't thought of what it's like to sit there on the opposite end of a defense attorney who was tearing you apart going for your pension. All right, these are things that you need to take in consideration. You're making law enforcement, you're doing so much worse than you're doing help.
Okay, if you want to teach combat, teach combat. Don't go on YouTube and say that you understand what it's like and how the bad tactics the police use and then, then the, poor, the poor tactics that the cops use. You know what? If you talk about a fellow brother in blue who wound up doing something that caused a tragedy to someone else, good, stick to your own martial arts school. Stick to your glory days of whatever you decided to do and all your teaching people around the world. That's great. I have no use for you. Again, these are my opinions. You don't belong teaching Cops. No one who has not worn this uniform does. All right? What do you have to add as far as that one percenter goes for the cause and effect, the action and reaction aspect of what you saw? What were you thinking even as a calm, you know, it's a scenario, you know this is all staged, but if you can combine that with a mindset of, I'm not fucking going to jail today. As a, uh, as a knife assailant, it's easy. It's easy to defeat you. Can you translate that all in empty hands too? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you can basically throw punches at me and incapacitate me? Yeah. Well, I mean, at least enough for me to uh, have the time to get to the knife, which is going to take maybe on a bad draw, a second, maybe a second and a half. Why do I want to go putting up my dukes and going and fighting somebody like that? Remember, my job is to take control over him. So it's compliance. He's obviously not compliant. It's control. Can I control him? Or then it's incapacitation. How do you incapac incapacitate a threat like that? That's the problem that you guys don't think about when you put together your curriculums for law enforcement. You just don't get it. We got a lot more coming to the channel. Paul, thanks. Thank you. This Matt, Chris, thanks. We'll see you in the next video.